Hi everyone good to see you again all I hope you all will be fine. Please check Iraq latest news updates. The U.S. Treasury Department announced, on Thursday, that Iraq ranks among the largest foreign holders of U.S. bonds. The Treasury said in the latest table, seen by Shafak News Agency, that Iraq advanced one rank despite the decrease in its holdings of bonds for the month of July by $400 million, reaching 36th place among the countries with the largest possessions of U.S. Treasury bonds of the 38 countries listed in the table for countries. She added, Iraq's possession of these bonds amounted to $32.6 billion for the month of July, a decrease of 1.21% from the month of June, which Iraq's possession of bonds amounted to $33 billion, and a decrease of 6.12% from the month of June for the year 2022. The Treasury also indicated that Iraq was the fourth largest Arab country after Saudi Arabia the Emirates, and Kuwait, while Japan came at the top of the countries with the largest holding of these bonds, with $1.112 trillion, followed by China second with $821 billion, the United Kingdom third with $662 billion, and Luxembourg fourth with $349. $1 billion, and Belgium is fifth with $318 billion. It indicated that, the total bonds of countries around the world for the month of July increased by $103 billion compared to last June, reaching $7 trillion and $654 billion. And Mohammad Shia, al-Sudani, Prime Minister of Iraq, said that his country has always believed in the principles the UN was founded upon. The spirit of consensus has prevailed in Iraq. We now have a government that enjoys a widespread political coalition that covers all aspects of society, he added. It has adopted a program with crucial priorities that reflect issues that must be implemented without delay and that benefit the people of Iraq. These priorities include employment opportunities, poverty eradication, fighting corruption and enacting economic reforms. Iraq has become a safe environment, for investors as well. A pivotal state in the global oil market, Iraq is also working on a regional corridor that will make transport and trade easier. Turning to corruption, he said, indeed, his country faced a corruption pandemic. The government is focused on eradicating this disease, he stressed. It is vital to pursue those who spread corruption. We must return the money they have stolen because we believe there is a symbiotic relationship between corruption and terrorism, he went on to say. We want Iraq part of the solution to any international and regional problem, he added. Iraq is committed to international law and respects all United Nations resolutions. That is why Baghdad rejects any interference in its internal affairs, regardless of the excuse. He stressed that, Iraq will not be a launching point of aggression against any other state. To its neighbors, his country extends the hand of friendship. We hope to achieve regional integration. Iraq's place in the field of international cooperation must be bolstered. On the holding of local elections, after a 10-year hiatus, he said the federal government is working with the region of Kurdistan and all other regions of Iraq on equal footing. Turning to climate change, he noted that the land of Mesopotamia is suffering from a drought, also cautioning the cradle of civilization must not be allowed to die of thirst. Iraq is working on exerting more efforts between relevant regional states to form a negotiating bloc and to manage cross-border water resources. He stressed the need to mobilize international efforts to ensure the sustainability of water sources. On a national level, Iraq has taken steps to lower emissions and combat pollution. However, institutions are needed to deal with mounting climate challenges. Further, 
he underscored Iraq's intensifying efforts in combating drugs and any related activities. It is no secret that there is a direct relationship between terrorism and drugs, he said. Young people constitute 60% of the country's population. They are the best investment, he continued, underscoring the many programs that aim to support students and youth so that they can find employment opportunities. Students and young people must be empowered with skills that can allow for innovation. He also recognized the role of women in helping Iraq achieve victory against terrorism. Pledging support to the Palestinian people, he called for an end to the suffering of the Syrian people and stressed that they must be allowed full control of their territory. Burning the Holy Quran is a hate crime, he went on to say, warning also, we, in Iraq, know the bitter taste of religious extremism. Iraq's International Development Bank IDB, and the UAE's Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry launched the Together initiative, aiming to provide the necessary support and create joint investment opportunities for institutions and the private sector in Iraq and the UAE. The IDB's chairman, Ziad Khalif, said that this step will contribute to increasing the volume of trade exchange between the two countries, which is now $27 billion annually, according to Al Arabiya News. We are looking forward to deepening the economic partnership between Iraq and the UAE to reach joint economic integration, Khalif explained. Khalif illustrated that the economic trade relationship between the UAE and Iraq is special, adding that the UAE is Iraq's first trading partner with an annual trade volume estimated at $27 billion and a growth rate of no less than 6%. I think we will be able to increase the growth rate of trade exchange between the two countries in the coming period. The IDB launched its services in the UAE a year ago and currently manages about 8% of trade exchange between the two countries, the IDB's chairman clarified. Khalif also mentioned that the IDB launched a package of services for private sector companies in Iraq and the UAE, indicating that the bank established strategic partnerships with major institutions in the UAE. The IDB's chairman added that its partnership with the UAE's Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry was signed last June and was completed with the launch of the Together initiative between UAE and Iraqi companies. And in its 39th regular session, chaired by Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al Sudani, the Iraqi cabinet made important decisions concerning the oil sector and infrastructure development for exports. The Ministry of Finance will allocate the total cost of 1,265,444,000,000 Iraqi dinars $967 million for the construction of offshore pipelines 4 and 5 and a new offshore platform. This allocation will be deposited with the Trade Bank of Iraq TBI, and is part of the investment plan for the Ministry of Oil's Basra Oil Company BOC, for the year 2023. The Ministry of Planning and the Ministry of Oil commit to covering the total project cost in advance, as well as annual allocations in the investment budget for the years 2023, 2024, 2025, and 2026. The Ministries of Oil and Planning will notify the Ministry of Finance's Accounting Department about the funding due to the contracting company based on progress and approved contexts. The funds will be released from the deposit mentioned in point 1. This decision reflects the government's commitment to enhancing Iraq's oil infrastructure and its capabilities for export, aligning with the country's economic development goals. Thanks take care.